Moving on to 7.6, uh, this particular slide, there's only two slides with this one, so it's going to seem really fast, but there are two videos that I have posted that I would like you guys to watch. And so um, in doing that, please take the time to watch them because one is about, is about 15 minutes and the other one's only, the, I only want you to watch a section of it and I will have that instruction on, on D2L. But I want you to watch those. All this is, all this video that I'm doing here is just to give you a quick summary as to what those videos were about. They do a really good job of describing it. So that's why I'm pointing you to them because there's no point in me reinventing the wheel and you would be actually watching these educational videos in class if we were there. So, um, the, we're going to jump right into the Universal Transverse Mercator. We talked about this one. So the, this one is really quite, quite cool. So it is universal, so it's used across the world. Uh, it's transverse, so it means it's sideways. It, and it's a mercator, which means it is a secant cylinder. So important things to notice there. And so what the Universal Transverse Mercator is, is that I take me in my entire world, and I separate it up into 60 six degree zones and each of those zones I'm actually going to fit a one of these transverse mercator cylinders to that particular zone so you can imagine that we have 60 cylinders that are like kind of just rotating around the earth that fit every single zone so we're just that that's what's happening so, um, so for example, on this, this diagram here, my zone is from one side to the other, but the actual Earth itself, it kind of has this like weird curve to it, right? So when I curve it around, I'm trying to reduce any of the distortion, and so I have to, I end up like kind of making it bigger at certain points. So in here, the false northing, is, and I make it bigger at the top, that's what I mean by certain points, top and bottom, that's where it's getting. So the false northing is known at zero meters, and that is known as the equator. So you'll notice in the video that they talk about north and south poles, and they, they really go into the south pole a lot into detail. I am not going to go into detail for the south side. I do not expect you guys to remember the numbers for the south side. All I expect you to do is remember like for the north. If you plan on working in Australia, obviously, please definitely, or New Zealand or anything in the Southern Hemisphere, please go back and review this and review the video I gave you guys, or like I pointed you guys to, um, because I you'll need to know those numbers there. But for the Northern Hemisphere, we start at zero at the equator, and we count up all the way up to the North Pole. So that is my northing, that's my northing values, is counting all the way up. Then my false easting, and we call it false because they really don't have a number. A, a circle, a false northing, the reason that it's false is because where does a circle start? Where is the zero on a circle? It really doesn't exist. So, and even an ellipse, like, or ellipsoid, there is no zero. So we call it a false zero because it's not a real, there's not an absolute zero anywhere. So we, we have a false easting, which is individual for each zone, so you'll have learned that in the video. And that center line of the zone, which is known as, as, the, as the central meridian, that is set to 500,000 meters east. This is awesome because there is no negative numbers, so it's really good. Um, so, and again, like as a quick review, it's a transverse cylindrical secant projection. As you go through the video, it's going to talk about the different zones. So, for example, we are in the little quad quadrants, they call them, even though there's more than four. But, um, but so we're in zone 11 and quadrant U. So you're going to see 11U on any kind of GPS system that you use. And that's just because of the nature that we are in zone 11 quadrant U from the equator. So going north. And then it gives you the the actual like um, coordinates from there. The other thing too with with that is when you are looking at UTM coordinates, you know right away it's a UTM coordinate coordinate because it is hundreds of thousands. <laughs> okay, so because there is hundreds of thousands of meters to the east, that is 
in a, an indication that it is a transverse mercator. If it is lower than that, like really small, it probably is not a universal transverse mercator coordinate. So that's just some important notes to make there. Um, so the UTM is really important for that. Then we have the Lambert Conic Conformal. And so this is best used in northern, long northern countries like I talked about. It is a conic secant projection. You need to watch the video for this one. There are two places, because it's secant, two places of zero, like zero distortion, as it shows here. And, um, and so you can see that it's really good for Canada because it does kind of match along there. And even the US, they represent it with LCC as well. So take a look at the video. You don't have to memorize any formulas or anything like that with it. So just kind of keep that in mind that as you're going through, I just want you to visualize what's going on. Where are the zero distortions? Why does it get set up this way? And so answer those questions. And because you guys are all taking really good notes all the way through here in your own words, those are questions to answer while you are watching the video. And I'm going to leave it at that because I, I do want you to watch the video. I don't want to review too much of the information in here. And it allows me to test to see who has actually gone and done their homework. So that is the Universal Transverse Mercator and the Lambert Conic Conformal. And that, um, so I'll just summarize that at the end here, and we'll be getting into Objective 7.7.